Uh, my name is Neil Lee. I'm the chair of the ICP Bard MFA program. And I, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the 2019 version of SlideFest. SlideFest is um, our, uh, our event that um, uh, is the capstone um, to the first year experience of our MFA students. Um, it is uh, it's a gathering where we celebrate their achievements. We've been doing it long enough that I remember when um, several of us had to run to the back to fix jammed slide projectors <laughs> that were projecting actual slides. Um, so uh, every year it is, um, it's one of my favorite events because it is always a bundle of surprises. Um, and it's great to kind of finish out the year with seeing the, the distance that um, so many of our students have traveled between arriving here in August and up until now. So um, we're very excited to see what they're all up to. Um, I encourage you, if you have not had the chance yet, um, when the program is finished, to um, check out the two pop-up exhibitions, the two rooms of pop-up exhibitions um, uh, that the students have put together, and to also take some time to look at the exhibition that's up in, our, in the rest of our space here, um, that is work by our um, second year students who are completing their thesis. Um, the first year students are, um, uh, I was going to say shepherded, um, mentored, um, uh, uh, helped, witnessed along this process um, by um, uh, a capable um, faculty member um, who uh, gets them to a great point every year. And it's my pleasure to introduce him to you now, Marvin Heifer. I want to thanks to everybody for coming to tonight's event. And as Naylan said, this is an annual Event. And it's an interesting one because people in the first year of this MFA program um, go through an extraordinary process where they kind of buy the time um, to spend two years of their lives looking at photographs, making photographs, thinking about photographs, thinking about photography in a moment when photography is changing in every way imaginable. And so over the course of the first year, there's a lot of dialogues that happen. There are a lot of assignments that are given. And what's nice about SlideFest is that it's an opportunity for everybody to do whatever they want. And the parameters of the event are basically, you get five minutes. And um, think about what you might like to do, what you might like to address, what kind of things you might want to put up for people to see and respond to, and let's put on a show. It's the class is, uh, it's a production class. We, in addition to doing slide fest, we take over the ICP Bard blog and uh, the ICP Bard Instagram account. It's very much about helping people figure out ways of getting your work out into the world because one of the things that you learn in a program like this if you work in the photography field is that it's each one of our own responsibilities pretty much to take our own vision and careers in our hands and make what we can with that so with that in mind you know it's it's we do slide fest and then the question is do we want there to be a theme for slide fest do we want there to be a theme for the pop-up shows that we also do so people can get work up on walls as well and this year the idea was the word set which came up because it turns out that the word set is the word with the most definitions in the english language there's 464 different definitions of that word and so that was the challenge. It's like, okay, respond to that word, and in a funny way, it's kind of like photography, which has at least 464 definitions and uses in the world, too. So um, what we're going to do tonight is we've got 11 presentations. They run about four or five minutes each, 
and we'll cycle through those. There's no intermission. And after that, um, as Nalan said, please go across the hall to classroom A, which is to your left, and classroom C, which is to your right. And there's terrific installations of work by the students in the first year. So with that said, first presentation is No, not ready. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, so I made a list because there's just too much to remember when I'm making art. So here goes. An idea pops into my head. I decide, hmm, that's a pretty good idea. I think, wow, that's probably the best idea I've ever had. I immediately picture a show at a Chelsea gallery. <laughs> Wait, this is bigger than that. And I picture the new photography exhibit at MoMA. There's no question I will be accepted. <laughs> then I imagine the New York Times review and a piece in Vanity Fair. And of course I have to plan what I'm going to wear for the photo shoot. I have to prepare for the Times Magazine section on, I know they'll ask me to do this, what do I do on Sundays? I just love that feature. I'll think about how much I love those cute little things so I'll go and I'll read past them. Then I'll write out my answers. Rise at six, run in the park, bake a frittata, fake news. I actually get up about 9.30 and stare out the window for about an hour, <laughs> but that's okay. Then there's so much to think about because this is the big, the big one. This is what I've been waiting for my whole life. This is the big one. And so I decide that there's just too much excitement right now. I better take a nap. <laughs> I wake up and I think, you know, I'm sure that Tate and the Getty are going to want this show too. So I have to go check Travago for hotels and airlines. I just love the word Travago. So I say Travago a few times. I love to repeat words. Then I research credit cards and who gives the most travel points. That's very important because you know, I have all these places to go. So then I have to make a list of what to pack for London and for LA. I'll see if there's a sale at Eileen Fisher. <laughs> I'll decide this is way too big. I'm going to pay full price. So I ordered something expensive from a mem members only site. Those ones that you have to fill out all those forms. So since I canceled my Facebook account, I hate those creeps now, I make a list of friends to invite to openings. But first, I have to go buy notebooks and pens. I get all excited about new moleskin notebooks. I go to the stationery store and I buy moleskin notebooks. I get different color pens for my moleskin notebooks. I imagine how much these notebooks will be worth after I put in my artist statement. I read some artist statements to figure out what to write. I quit that, because even though I've been in graduate school for a year, I still can't understand them. I decide I need a break. So I do the dumbed down New York Times Sunday crossword puzzle for a while. I make a list of how to prepare for the visiting journalists. Is that my timer? <laughs> I jot down some anecdotes about my childhood. I set out some cameras on the bookshelf. I put some expense, my expensive Eggleston set where it can't be missed. I decide I'll serve petty fours, I love to say petty fours, and port to the journalists who come to my apartment. So I run around town sampling petty fours. I eat lots of petty fours. Then I feel terrible about eating all those petty fours. I get an upset stomach. I go home and take a nap. I wake up and I try to remember my big idea. I break out into a sweat. I sink into the sofa. I realize my idea is sophomoric, idiotic, moronic, embarrassing. I can't even turn the page, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> okay, hold on. There's more. There's more on trauma here. I ask myself, really, that's it? That's the big idea? There's not going to be interviews. 
no talk shows, no portraits, no articles. I look for the receipts to return the new clothes. I put on my pajamas, I turn on the TV, I drink the pork.
a short demonstration on how you make it in the art world as a short person. <laughs> um, you can all go home now. <laughs> I've been watching my mother through a life surveillance camera. It was installed in the living room, backyard, and other common spaces of the house to watch over our sick dog two years ago, as and when we were unable to be at home for her. No one bothered to pull it down even after she passed away. It kept watching us for many months. Two years later, we got a new dog. I moved to New York City, and my mother is back home in New York. I recently gained access to the camera to do what I'm doing through this project, making, watching over my mother because I'm worried that she's struggling with loneliness and depression while I'm away and in no way able to take care of her. I use this, medi this medium to pose questions about privacy, voyeurism, distance, longing, connection and the lack of it in the face of my own loneliness in this city. I'm sometimes certain of having found answers and other times comfortable in just imagining the shape of them. Either way, this work is not about reaching an answer. It is about doing the time, doing the labor, going the distance even if it does not lead you to the X on the map. I think about nostalgia and how it treats all past with the sameness, where all is settled and everything is all right. I think about longing that is infantilizing. I watch her in the present. What does it mean to watch my mother is the first question I ask myself and I imagine Freud turned in his grave. <laughs> I follow it with an afterthought to comfort myself. Women cannot go through Oedipus complex because how can you hate something you ultimately become? Will I become my mother? Is it comforting to know that I would one day become her? I have started to look like her already. I have inherited her soft hands that mislead you into believing that she hasn't worked a single day. Her eyes. My father says they cover three-fourths of her face when she gets angry. It is a fleeting family joke. I have inherited her rage. How my mouth is so quick to slur a swear word and follow it with an apology immediately after. I have inherited her smallness. I do not desire this vulgarity even though it comes handy on most days. <laughs> If I must become her, I must learn how. What is it about watching someone that is vulgar? If I tell you, my mother is my best friend and I only miss her, will the act of watching her become love, become tender? Will you then not ask me if she knows that I watch her? Don't mothers watch over their children all the time? and let this fear grow inside of them that a minute of missed attention could cause major harm. When I told my mother about being sexually abused as a seven-year-old, she blamed herself for not paying enough attention to me as a child. Still does. Maternal instincts. Am I embodying a maternal instinct but in reverse? Or does my voyeurism bring me here? Is it voyeuristic if, one, I do not derive pleasure in watching my mother in pain? If anything, it, might, it makes my homesickness worse, making it an acute case of masochism. Mm -hmm. Two, the gaze is mine, is female. And three, I do not like the word voyeurism. Mm -hmm. I have been making fewer calls to her lately. She asks if it is because watching her read the newspaper and watering the plants every morning is more assuring than her saying, I'm okay, over panic-driven calls made across time zones every day. It is.
Hey, I'm Jeremy. Uh, this is a slideshow in which I tell stories by recontextualizing discrete images into anachronistic pairs. Next up is a video I made during a period of deep introspection. In an attempt to reclaim lost memories, I pointed my camera at a dark, rotating void. This is what looked back.
hear me? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, making sure. Uh, thank you guys for coming out. Thank you too for my classmates, Mr. Marvin. Good job, guys. All right. So, um, my name is Danny Peralta. I'm going to um, do a reading today of something that I've read many times before, but never actually read out loud. Um, it's going to be accompanied by something of a little video, so please enjoy. So, the Hermes Principles for Democratic Organizing. On December 6th to the 8th, 1996, 40 people of color and European American representatives met in Hermes, New Mexico for the Working Group Meeting on Globalization and Trade. The Hermes meeting was hosted by the Southwest Network for Environmental and Economic Justice with the intention of hammering out common understandings between participants from different cultures, politics, and organizations. The following six Hermes principles for democratic organizing were adapted by the participants. Number one, be inclusive. If we hope to achieve just societies that include all people in decision making and ensure that all people have an equitable share of the wealth and the work of this world, then we must work to build that kind of inclusiveness into our own movement in order to develop alternative policies and institutions to the policies under neoliberalism. This requires more than tokenism. It cannot be achieved without diversity at the planning table and staffing and coordination. It may delay the achievement of other important goals. It will require discussion, hard work, patience, and advanced planning. It may involve conflict, but through this conflict, we can learn better ways of working together. It's about building alternative institutions, movement building, and not compromising in order to be accepted into the anti-globalization club. Number two, emphasis on bottom-up organizing. To succeed, it is important to reach out into new constituencies and reach into levels, excuse me, to reach within all levels of leadership and membership bases of organizations that are already involved in our networks. We must continually build and strengthen a base which provides our credibility, our strategies, mobilizations, leadership development, and the energy for the work we must do daily. Number three, let people speak for themselves. We must be sure that the relevant voices of people directly affected are heard. Ways must be provided for spokespersons to represent and be responsible to the affected constituencies. It is important for organizations to clarify their roles and who they represent and to assure accountability within our structures. Number four, we must work together in solidarity and mutuality. Groups working on similar issues with compatible visions should consciously act in solidarity, mutuality, and support each other's work. In the long run, a more significant step is to incorporate the goals and values of other groups within our work in order to build strong relationships. For instance, in the long run, it is more important, than labor, it is more important for labor unions and, ec and community economic development projects include the issue of environmental sustainability in their own strategies rather than just lending support to the environmental organizations. Communication strategies and resource sharing is critical to help us see our connections and build on these. Number five, build just relationships amongst ourselves. We need to treat each other with justice and respect, both on an individual and an organizational level, in this country and across borders. Defining and developing just relationships will be a process that won't happen overnight. It must include clarity about decision making, sharing strategies, and resource distribution. There are clearly many skills necessary to succeed. We need to determine the ways for those complementary skills to coordinate and be accountable to one another. And finally, number six, commitment to self-transformation. As we change societies, we must change from operating on the mode of individualism to community sentiments. We must walk our talk. We must be the values that we say we're struggling for, and we must be justice, be peace, and be community. Thank
Well, I get to know you. You mean get fucked by you? Honestly, though. I mean, why would you want to get to know someone just based on how they dress? They could be the worst. Hello, good morning, how are you doing? My name Jace Anson. Kindly drop your email or number so we can talk and know more about each other, if you don't mind. <laughs> Sorry for the intrusion, but allow me to fill that misconnection void with an attempt to convince you that sending a rather cooler, calm, and collected NYC resident with a gift for turning the negatives into potential intriguing positives a message stating what train you may be on during your daily commute. I just want to know, does the thought of me sneaking up behind you and starting off fondling your thighs turn you on? Cause I can slide my fingers next to your breast and grope them while no one is looking. Let me get turned on and turn you on as I get harder with every rub that turns into me pushing up against you. And so if you have had these thoughts similar to mine, then you know the objective is for you to next time send me a message that says when you will be getting on what train at what time so I can get a full view of the possible curious Carver hat wearing stranger. You sound cool. Well I love to meet and if there is chemistry I'm very interested of your posting. If you real then send me some pics of you there shirlainavotney89 at gmail.com Christ's sacrifice for all of us sinners. Our salvation to eternal life is only through the forgiveness of all our sins by the sacrificed Lamb of God, having our faith and belief in Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, and to be saved from not being saved. If you have this claim, be sure to cling to it in these last days. It is the oil in our lamps. You do not have you should consider doing so. Faith brings peace and joy. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. <laughs> Hi. Good morning, I bet he'd be very happy to know you wanted to get to know him better. I work right by the L train on Lorimer. I'm 6'1", 195 pounds. You sound very attractive, let's talk and become friends. Hi. I'm an athletic 30-year-old white male, looking to give a relaxing full-body massage to a beautiful <laughs> woman. Do you enjoy massages? Good morning. I am not the guy you saw on the train, but we might be a good match to be enjoy each other and have fun and a great time together. I'm 39, fun, attractive, have a sense of humor, sane, intelligent, decent. I'm 5'9", black hair, brown eyes, clean, DMD free. I love to please a nice woman and I know how to please I will please your needs, satisfy your cravings, and fulfill your desires and yes. fantasies. Please get back to me, so we can meet soon I will be waiting and looking forward to hearing from you. Hi, I'm following up on a email I sent you replying to your post, but I didn't hear from you I assume you got a lot of responses, so I'm wondering if you saw my email and if you'd be interested in getting together. Please tell me what you think. I was on this train reading a book about physics, but something tells me I'm not the same guy lol cause I don't dress super nicely or anything. I wish I was. What a fucking coincidence though. <laughs> Tall, dark and handsome, and hum, drinks maybe. Hi, I am still looking are you available? I am real, and hope you are too. It's my personal email voyeur, 1930, at gmail.com. I am really interested and serious. This posting has been flagged for removal. Please be sure to comply with posted guidelines and the CL2. Information on flagging and community moderation is available. Advice from CL users about flagging can be found in Flag Help Forum. Sorry for the inconvenience, and thanks for your understanding.
uh, when I was making the game, it reminded me of the experience in a dark room. Uh, film developing is kind of hard to get an image with perfect tone and contrast. Every single part of the process could end in failure. Many pictures were shared and thrown into the trash can. And I found it really weird when I look at these scattered portraits like this mushy and their exposed photos were erased from the reality and dragged into the mental space. This scattered image gave me a sense of the mystery. I recently flipped through my family's photo album. I couldn't rely on the image to recall some specific moment in my life, but still, I can extract some feeling that I experienced in this place. In the process, I collaborated with my parents to build the whole thing. I asked my father to take some pictures from different angle in my home in Beijing. After that, I generated these models directly from the image and put them together to reveal the place I have lived for more than 20 years. In a game, you can see many parts of the models are broken and melting to the abstract part and that is because of the lack of the information and the data. I'm not sure if there will be a storyline or some tasks in the game. I'd like to people explore the world I made by themselves without any directions, like a walking simulator. It's more like an outline, not a script. For me, it's kind of playful to reveal my home by making a video game. Mm -hmm. It connects to my past, present, and future. I don't want to be so hard for myself to go deep into the experience or the memories, because my memories and feelings are not linear. Mostly jumps from one part to the <coughs> to an other without logical steps. I have no idea where it will take me, but my making the games, it's like piercing together what my life has been about.
Hannah Zhang. I'm from China. Um, I'm showing a video tonight, and I want to thank my classmate Yi Ming, who helped me uh, show part of the video. And
everyone who participated tonight, class of 2020. Um, please stop in at pop-up exhibitions at either end of the hall or at the break and we'll join us in the lobby for some refreshments and to celebrate. Thank you. Thank you.